Hello, and welcome to our very first Nurse Shark Academy show. I'm so excited to be here. I'm Tina Baxter, and I'm the host. And I wanted to share with you in our very first episode the reason why we started the podcast in the first place. And I thought I'd share a little bit about my own entrepreneurial journey. I started out as a, a lab tech. I worked as a lab tech um, in the nursing home when I was in high school and a volunteer in long-term care in the nursing home. And it was through those experiences and my love of science that I ended up becoming a nurse. I uh, graduated from high school and went to college at Taylor University in Upland, Indiana, where I received a degree in biology. And my intent initially was to go to medical school, but I found that it just didn't fit me. It didn't fit what I wanted. Uh, it spent a lot of time with my family uh, who were doctors and, and I've had nurses and other kinds of health professionals in my family. And what I realized is that as a physician, um, a lot of doctors are always on call they never get to play with all the wonderful toys that they have or take the trips that they want to take because they're always working. And I decided that that's not what I wanted for my life. I wanted more flexibility. I also thought that I would like to know more about my patients and to be there um, in the quiet times, in the times at night when they're all alone and they need someone to hold their hand. That is what really interested me and what drew me to the profession of nursing. So having left <laughs> Taylor University uh, as a fifth year senior, I decided to transfer to Anderson University. And two weeks before the semester started, my lease was up and I called them up and I said, let me into your school and your school of nursing. I wanna be a nurse, let me in. Now I have to say that I didn't know how hard it was to get into nursing school because in my mind, if there's something that I felt that the Lord was leading me to do and something I wanted to do, I just went out and did it. So I just assumed they would take me and they did. Uh, they said, well, first you have to be accepted into the university and then apply to the school of nursing. So I applied to the university to transfer. And then I uh, was accepted to university. And then about a week or so later, I was accepted into the School of Nursing as a sophomore, because even though I was pretty much done with my bachelor's degree in biology and my two um, uh, minors, I still had a couple of classes left. And so uh, they wanted me to come in as a sophomore because I had to take all of the nursing classes. So I sort of started over, but not completely from the beginning. So I finished my uh, biology degree at, at Anderson University. And actually I had everything done in biology. I just had to transfer back one math class and one Bible class to finish. And so I took those at Anderson University and transferred those credits back to Taylor University and graduated with a bachelor's of science and uh, in a bachelor's of arts in biology. And then from Anderson University, I got a bachelor's of science in nursing. So my very first nursing job out of uh, college was working for uh, a hospital, Ball Memorial Hospital in Muncie, Indiana. And I, I tell this story because it was like a baptism by fire. So the first night that I'm off orientation, I'm, I'm orienting on the second shift, the 3 to 11 shift. I come off orientation at 11 p.m. I become charge nurse at 11.01 and have to open up the uh, addiction floor because I was on the psychiatry unit. And I would say that that was a very interesting night of uh, being a brand new nurse, really just off orientation. And I had three admissions that night of heavily detoxing patients to take care of. And it was just me and a CNA who, uh, bless her heart, could barely walk because her knees were so bad. And we had to do every two hour vital signs. <laughs> so you can imagine what kind of night that was. But it was during those experiences and the experiences that I had in, in high school and college, uh, being in different programs and leadership. Um, I took uh, broadcasting in high school and college. I had a radio show in high school. I had a jazz show in high school. I had a radio show in college. I had a gospel show. 
I was able to work in the lab as a high school student for three years. I did that for three summers. I worked as a CNA while I was going through nursing school. And it's during that time in nursing school that I developed my very first side hustle, which was teaching CPR classes on the side so I could make extra money. It never occurred to me to turn that into a business until years later. But that I think is what started that entrepreneurial bug because I you know, was looking to make some extra cash and I had a skill that I could market. And so that's what I did. So after working uh, in psychiatry for Ball Memorial, I moved on to St. John's and became a nurse supervisor on the evening shift, worked with the church health stations, um, had wonderful leadership opportunities there, learned a lot about myself during that time. And what I realized is that though I enjoyed working with others um, and being in that management capacity, I did not enjoy being middle management. Go figure. So I realized that that really wasn't my calling and I needed to do something else. So I decided to take a class um, as a parish nurse. And so there was a class at the University of Indianapolis uh, for the parish nursing course. And you can take it either as a certificate course or you can take it towards master's credit. So in my mind, I thought, well, I always wanted to get my master's degree. So let me think and try to take it for master's credit to see how I'll do working full time and taking graduate classes. So I enrolled and enrolled for master's credit. And so I got through the class, you know, made an A, did all the things for the class. And as I was finishing, the dean at that time, who had worked with me previously as an undergraduate, um, on a committee with the Indiana State Nurses Association, I was their student representative on that board. And so she knew me from there. And she said, well, why haven't you applied to the master's program? And of course I said, well, I didn't want to take the GRE again. My scores were too old. I didn't, you know, on and on. I didn't know if I had the money. And so because I was on the fence, she sort of kicked me off the fence <laughs> and sent me a letter that said, you are now enrolled in the family nurse practitioner program, show up for class, you have provisional enrollment because I didn't want to take the GRE again. And she didn't let that stand in my way. So I'm ever grateful to Sharon Isaacs for that. And so I started the program in the family nurse practitioner program. And I was doing a dual major because if anyone knows me, I'm always doing double the things. I can't focus on just the one, uh, because I'm always interested and curious. So in my undergraduate, uh, the first time I had a biology degree with a mass, uh, minor in French and a minor in Bible. For the second time, I had a bachelor's degree in nursing with a minor in psychology. And then now I was doing a double major in nursing education and family nurse practitioner. And I was doing fr fairly well in the FNP program, but I got to the PEDS rotation. Um, and I found that I really, I had never done peds before. So, you know, I'm always game to try something new. I've never done peds. I've worked with adolescents. I've worked with children on the psychiatry side, but never like pediatric focus, right? Primary care, pediatric focus, never done it. Got in there and I was pretty miserable. I realized that I was missing my residence at the nursing home. And I wanted to visit them. I thought, well, maybe I can just go back and visit and hang out with them. And that's when I realized I'm in the wrong program. Not that I don't love children. I just didn't want to take care of them. And let me back up. During my time at Taylor University, this was very uh, key and pivotal. I spent some time because labor and de delivery was never my area in nursing school. Never my area. So when I worked um, at, back in biology, uh, when I was at Taylor, I had to spend two weeks with my cousin who was an OBGYN and he was delivering babies. And that's when I realized that delivering babies was not for me. Um, not that I don't think that's a wonderful, I, I mean, I have midwife friends that just love it, but I discovered I did not have the patience for that, you know? Um, and it just seemed kind of boring. <laughs> and I'm going to say this because I think, you know, oh, it's all the same, right? And my midwife friends are like, no, every birth experience is different. 
I'm like, okay, yeah, but I said, but it's not exciting until something happens. And obviously you don't want something to happen. So we don't want to be that exciting, right? So I really, I really, I realized I wasn't cut out for that. And then I decided that, and that also was the time that I decided maybe medical school wasn't what I wanted to do. So moving forward, like I said, I never had tried peas before. I knew L and D wasn't for me. I wasn't really going to do women's health per se, because that just I just didn't want to do that. Um, did not interest me. What I was interested in was older adults, and that's where I understood that that's my calling and my niche because. Um, Older adults are kind of like a mystery. They have all this lived experience and so many things that you can learn from them, but also because of the complicated case that you have a lot of times, older adults have a lot of chronic illnesses, there's a lot to manage and that appealed to me. And what I discovered that when you work in long-term care or in gerontology, every day is different. You never know what's gonna happen on that day. And that also appealed to me. So knowing that I needed that little variety and spice of life, I switched to the gerontological nurse practitioner program. And in that time, I also, uh, my professors wisely told me um, after a couple of meltdowns that maybe I should finish one degree and then fin take another year and finish the second. So I ended up with a master's in nursing education and a post-master's as a gerontological nurse practitioner. And here's why I say the master's in nursing education was so critical, because I do and still love to teach. And I taught adjunct faculty at Ivy Tech while I was at Ball Hospital. I taught adjunct faculty um, at Anderson University. I taught adjunct fac faculty at the University of Indianapolis. And there's a couple of things that I've learned from those experiences. They were wonderful. But I also saw that how really the classes are geared toward the university schedule and not necessarily the student schedule. And I just thought that tenure track, mm, just not for me. So I went into staff education and I, uh, when I left uh, St. John's and the Anderson Center, I moved on to Fairbanks where I became the nurse educator at Fairbanks enjoyed my time there. I also became a nurse practitioner. That was my very first nurse practitioner job in uh, mental health and addictions. And so I worked there. Uh, from there, I left after, you know, that was the, by the way, I was the first nurse educator that they had there. So I sort of made the role what it was. But I left there because it wasn't a full-time position and I needed full-time uh, wages. And a friend of mine said, it was time for me to get a grown-up job that <laughs> actually paid me for what I was worth. And I, I happen to agree with her. It was kind of funny when she told me that. She was, had also been my preceptor in uh, my geriatric rotation when, uh, at the VA. So this is important, uh, that relationship there. So I decided to get another job, and I worked uh, for a company called Advanced Healthcare Associates, uh, making nursing home rounds and long-term care. I learned a lot. Uh, my colleagues who've worked there, we all sort of call it boot camp. If you survive boot camp, you'll be fine. Um, and that was sort of a boot camp experience. And I've learned a lot about uh, how to run a practice. And during that time, I was also working uh, Wednesdays in private practice at Advanced Healthcare, um, I mean, at... Um, Associates in Behavioral Counseling in Muncie. And so I was doing two jobs as usual. I'm, I'm the two jobs girl, okay? Um, and so I did that for a while. And then that position came to an end. And I found myself in kind of a flux. So I had some time. I wasn't working. I was living off a of severance. And I wanted to take the time to find a position that would be suitable for me. Um, and that would do well. And so I asked my friend who was wanting to start a business um, if I could lease some space in her building because I was working on a book, which by the way, it's, it was a fiction book and it's still unfinished. So I was working on the book and she said, well, why don't you come on board with me and be the COO of the organization? So we launched His Solutions Healthcare. It was myself, Wendy Shannon and uh, Jackie Walker. And 
so Wendy was my preceptor from the VA. So there you go again, that relationship. And we started our business together at, during the start of the recession, 2009, uh, when I was in between jobs. <laughs> and what happened is as we got this business started, I ended up with two job offers. And so I worked for American Health Network and I worked for Veracare, which was a uh, psychiatric uh, practice that went into long-term care. And so I saw patients on Wednesdays for Veracare and worked for American Health Network the other days of the week. During that time, I also picked up a PRN gig working for hospice. So I had that. I was also working with a, a home health agency at that time. So I was doing that as well. And so at one time, I looked up between the business and the jobs. I had about five jobs. I know that sounds insane, but I had a blast and I learned a lot. And what I learned is how to manage my time effectively so that when I'm working for uh, American Health Network, I was doing that, but then I could switch right over and take my students over to one of the nursing homes and work on their clinicals or what have you, or supervise them. I could and flip and maybe after I'm done working for American Health Network, go around and make my rounds and see my hospice patients because oftentimes they're in the same building um, and take care of business. And so I learned how to um, do those things and, and really schedule my time accordingly and still have time for myself. Very key and critical. After that, um, while, while we were still um, at His Solutions, it was also during the time around 2015 that I was asked to sit on a medical review panel. And that's where Baxter Professional Services was born. I wanted a venue where I can put all the things that I was doing that weren't necessarily part of his solutions, but I wanted something of my own that I could grow on my own. So I started Baxter Professional Services and I taught CPR classes, TB classes through our business, uh, which I still do. And I started as a legal nurse consultant. So I was asked to sit on a medical review panel for in Indiana, they convene a panel of experts before the Board of Insurance to make sure that it should, whether or not it should go on to trial. So I sat on my very first medical review panel and um, they asked me for a fee schedule, which of course I didn't have one. They asked me for a couple, a couple other things. And then there was another case where I had to give a deposition um, as a fact witness. And again, they asked me what my fee schedule was and I did not have one. And it was from those experiences that I really enjoyed the legal nurse consulting business and decided with my husband to launch a second business. And, and after that time, we added some other things into our business, including our uh, business with PPLSI and Legal Shield. We wanted to make sure that people had access to the justice system, having been in healthcare and around attorneys. I know what it's like not to have that representation and how to get you to trouble. And having a business, we knew we needed access to attorneys because we were dealing with students. Um, we were trying to open up an LPN school at the time. There's a whole lot of regulatory things. And so I had had the plan and knew, knew that it worked. And so um, my friend said to me, hey, why don't you sell it since you talk about it so much? And so that's how we got into that business. And so my husband and I, at the time, that's how we formed Baxter Professional Services so that he can help me with the legal show business and I can work on legal nurse consulting and other things. Well, it was during those times that suddenly people were asking me questions and about how do I get an LLC and how do I launch a business and you know what steps do I need to take and how do I write my business plan and what what do I need to know? And so because I was getting those one-on consultations and those things could take quite a while, I was working with someone to try to help her build her home care agency. Um, and it, it could take a lot. And so um, I was consulting, you know, here or there with people and I, and I got to the place to understand that I had additional skills and expertise that I could share. 
And so um, in 2020, as the pandemic was starting, we had been in business with His Solutions Healthcare for about 12 years. And we decided to close that business as partners to dissolve the business because our partnership, you know, we are still friends, but we decided all to go in different directions. By that time, we were, our attention was pulled in different things and we wanted different things. My partners were ready to slow down and retire and I was ready to run fast. <laughs> I was just getting started. And so uh, that business closed down and we were able to move uh, Baxter Professional Services to our current location on Lincoln Street. And as that business started to grow and we started working with our coaches and mentors to help us grow our business and all the different things that we were doing, um, hiring and an assistant, you know, we started moving and growing um, about a year, a little over a year ago, actually over two years ago now, about two years ago, because this is our second year. And um, I got to thinking, I said, you know, People are asking me about business and how to grow their business. Why don't I just start a coaching program? Instead of trying to, you know, do one off here or there and consult, I said, how about we just do something for everybody to get involved in? And so as I was mulling that around, I attended a training on challenges and how to run a challenge. And it was during that training that three-day training that we were tasked to start a challenge. And so I did my very first three-day challenge um, in 2021. And that's how the Nurse Shark Academy was born. And so we went through the process of setting up the Nurse Shark Academy, um, doing business as Baxter Professional Services. We are uh, expanding that program. Originally, I was just going to do a podcast because I wanted to talk to other nurse entrepreneurs. And it kind of grew into the coaching program. And so now I'm able to bring it back to what uh, the intent was, is not only do we have the coaching program, but now we're going to have the podcast because I want to highlight other nurse entrepreneurs, nurses that are out there and doing it. I want to celebrate us. And that's why I started this. I have an existing program uh, that talks about nursing business and news that we've been doing for over two years now, almost three years now. And that's going well. But I wanted to do something that specifically got to highlight nurses so that you can hear from these wonderful nurses, you know, that you may not have got to meet or know. There's nurses that are doing wonderful things um, every day, and we need to shine the light on them. And particularly nurse entrepreneurs, because in the years that I've been doing this, I've met a number of people that never thought that nurses could be entrepreneurs and have their own businesses. And I met a number of nurses that didn't know they could have their own business. And so what we've learned out of the pandemic with nurses uh, wanting to change, maybe get a break from the bedside, they're looking to start new businesses and start side hustles and all the things that they want to do. And that's why the Nurse Shark Academy show is here, because I want to support you and shine the light on you so that you can grow your business and so other nurses and others can hear about the wonderful things that you're doing. So I thought I'd share my story as our very first show and then say thank you for tuning in and to keep an eye on our show going forward. And if you're wanting to be a guest and you're a nurse and you own a business, let me know. I'd love to have you on the show. So that's it for me. I thought I'd share that with you. I look forward to seeing you again and I hope to see you soon. Have a great day.